Hey guys, it's Alex, and today I'm here with a review for Born Survivors by Wendy Holden. This is a non-fiction book about three women during the Holocaust who were pregnant at the time they arrived at Auschwitz. They go from Auschwitz to labor camps to eventually Mauthausen, where they wind up at the end of the war with their newborn babies. It's an incredibly heartbreaking story about these three women, and so incredibly touching. I gave this book four stars because it was truly wonderful. I picked it up at random from the library and was not really surprised, but incredibly happy with what this book turned out to be. It was so fascinating. It covered these three women from birth to death, so it was like mini biographies of each one. It didn't just focus on the time during the Holocaust, which I thought was definitely for this book's benefit. A lot of books like this do focus solely on the time of the Holocaust, whereas because this book covered each of the women's lives in their entirety, it felt like it had a lot more depth and a lot more interest. I was utterly fascinated by their stories. This was such a hard book to read, and I think every Holocaust book is like that, so I don't know that that would surprise anyone. But it's also hard because in each Holocaust book I read, I read a lot of World War II literature, or at least more than the average person, probably. It never fails to surprise me how horrible it is, and I think I don't think it will ever stop surprising me just how awful everything was. And this book was so heartbreaking because of that. It was so hard to read because of all the specific details. Because these three women survived, so you weren't just getting one story in a memoir or one fiction book. You were getting the accounts of these three individuals who survived, sometimes with friends of their own. And it was just utterly worthwhile. I had about three points of flaws for this book, which is why I didn't give it the full five stars, and then I'll get into talking about some more of the positives at the end. But I think my biggest issue with this book was that a lot of the information felt very basic, especially at the beginning. Wendy Holden summarized a lot of basic events leading up to World War II, leading up to the Holocaust, and as someone who has read a fair amount of World War II literature, it was just kind of boring because she wasn't going in depth on any of these things. She was just sort of summarizing in case you didn't already know. But I really don't need a summary on things like Crystal Noct or the Angelus, just because I already understand those things, at least to the degree that I need to to read a book like this. And there were just pages and pages of that, especially towards the beginning, so that was a little bit dull, a little bit dry. Really not what I picked this book up for. That did get better later on. I think the first chapter there was like 15 solid pages of just background information that you would need to understand how the Holocaust came to happen, but it was very boring and I really struggled with that. Like if you're going into this book knowing absolutely nothing, I think that would be helpful, but as someone who does already know most of that information, at least most of the basic information, I found it boring and I think if you pick up this book that is something you have to know going in. That It may be boring at the beginning, but it does get a lot better after that. And I struggled really hard with keeping the three women's stories separate. Because their stories interweave so much and because they're so similar, I kept mixing up the women. I kept forgetting which woman was which because it focuses on each of the women individually because they never actually meet. They're just in about the same place at about the same time. So it did feel like their stories were a little bit too similar to be obviously different. Like, of course they had different backgrounds, but they would wind up in the camp pregnant at about the same time, they'd be hiding their pregnancy in about the same way, and it did kind of run together. There was just too much overlap that I really couldn't keep track of them as it cycled through each woman's story. I don't think that's necessarily a flaw of the book. I just do struggle when there are like a couple of characters in the story, especially when there are so many similarities between them. So that obviously wasn't a deal breaker for me because I gave this book four stars and thought it was wonderful, but it was something that I had a lot of difficulties with. And then my final negative point was that at some points the writing felt a little bit clunky. It felt like she was trying too hard to make the prose beautiful when in a nonfiction book like this I was kind of just looking for it to be very clear and straightforward. I don't think she succeeded very well in making it her writing seem elevated or more literary. It just seemed a little bit trying too hard. I remember there was one specific point where she used like a fair number of adjectives that weren't really necessary and I do feel like her writing could have been just like a little bit more basic, a little bit less descriptive almost, because she was describing things that were very subjective, like from her point of view. I remember there was one specific point where she mentioned that the guards rudely awoke the women at 5am, and it's like, they're literally killing these women. 
is rudely really the best word here. And it wasn't just that. There were a couple of instances of that where it really did stand out to me as a little bit awkward, but not really a huge deal for this book. Just something of note. But overall, this book was wonderful. It's a different perspective on the Holocaust. It's something that I don't think has been very much discussed. This so worthwhile, so wonderful. I highly, highly recommend this book. If you're at all interested in World War II literature or the Holocaust, because I learned a lot from this book. And I don't necessarily feel that way about every World War II book I read, because I do read a fair amount of them. But this book was something different and something new. The individual stories of these women were enthralling. I kind of wish there'd almost been a little bit more for each woman, especially the early part of their lives, because I would have liked to know more about them. I don't think that's a flaw of this book, that's just how much I wanted to read more about it. I read a lot of this while I was at my boyfriend's, and I never wanted to put it down. He'd be like trying to talk to me, and I'd just be like, uh-huh, yep, just casually flipping through this book. It was really that wonderful. It only took me two or three days to read, and it was just such an amazing experience. It's definitely a slower read because this is hard nonfiction. It's not like narrative nonfiction. It does read a lot more like a biography, but it's still very easy, very straightforward and simple to read. I don't think you have to be an avid nonfiction reader to get through this book. I do think it's straightforward enough that the average person could get through it very easily. One specific thing I really liked about this book was that it covered the post-Holocaust lives of these women. I did mention that it covers their lives birth to death, but specifically it does talk about in detail the time period after they left the concentration camps, after they left Mauthausen. It talks about how they went about returning home to their families, how they went about getting health care for their children, how they went about getting on with their lives after their entire communities were killed, their whole families were killed. It's something that I don't feel like is discussed enough within Holocaust literature because that is such a big part of it. It's not just the trauma they went through in the camps, but also the trauma of afterwards where a lot of the people in these countries were still very anti-Semitic. I think it's mentioned specifically in this book that about 1600 Jews were killed after the Holocaust and after World War II ended for anti-Semitic reasons. And it was so heartbreaking. These women would return home and try to find their husbands, they try to find their parents or their families, and just no one would be there. A lot of Holocaust literature covers the literal Holocaust itself and then skips more to like the 80s or present day as they're still dealing with that trauma and it skips that period directly after and I do think I learned a lot about that in this book and I think that's something that other people might appreciate as well. That definitely wasn't the focus of this book but it was a semi-detailed section. I really just can't recommend this book enough. I thought it was utterly wonderful, I thought it was fascinating, and I think it's something that a lot of people would really enjoy. I've never heard anyone else talk about this book and I really think it's a worthwhile read. I learned a lot. It's so hard to read. Like, obviously it's not for everyone because it does detail a lot of the traumas of what happened in the camp, so there's a lot of trigger warnings for this. But if you can handle that kind of book, I highly, highly recommend this. It was really, really wonderful. Let me know down below if you read Born Survivors and what you thought of it if you had. I thought it was fantastic and I would just love to bully everyone into reading this book. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see y'all again soon.